behind me is what we call in English a barrow. In Latin they're called tumuli. This one's called horga, which is the old Norse word, which just basically means barrow. In fact, this whole area is called horga. It's named after this barrow. People call it King Bjorn's barrow because of an, a Viking Age king. Uh, but that's a confusion. In fact, when he was alive, he was called uh, King Bjorn uh, of Horga. He was named after this barrow. And then later they named the barrow King Bjorn's barrow, but it wasn't because of him, because this barrow is way older than the Viking Age. This one's from the Bronze Age. It's 3,000 years old. Now, Bronze Age barrows are not quite as common as the ones we see in the Viking Age, the Anglo-Saxon barrows in England. I mean, towards the, the Viking Age and the, the Vendel period, really the barrow practice, the burial mound practice, was limited to Germanic pagans. But it was not originally a Germanic practice or a Nordic practice. It was an Indo-European practice and it was found all over Europe. I mean, you can see today burial mounds everywhere from Slovakia, the Balk all around the Balkans, down the Mediterranean, you know, even in Buddhist countries, in, Hindu, in India, like stupa, which is like the, the, these Buddhist te uh, temple things, they're actually based on the old Indo-European burial mounds that the great men were buried in. And they've just developed into this temple form in the modern times. And we also have historic uh, sources talking about them from the Bronze Age in Europe because Homer's Iliad he talks directly about um, Petroclus, the burial of Petroclus and he was cremated and he was then uh, his, uh, there was a big funeral pyre and then uh, a burial mound was placed over the pyre, the ashes of the pyre. Well then afterwards uh, Achilles held a whole load of sporting games archery, wrestling chariot races Chariots, very Indo-European. Well, guess what? This one, thousands of miles away up here in Scandinavia, we're not far from Uppsala in Sweden. This one, the guy inside there, 3,000 years ago, they had a big burial, uh, funeral pyre, just like, uh, just like Petroclus in Greece. Then they put him in an oak coffin uh, and they had a, a cairn put over it. And on top of that cairn, a huge burial mound originally stood nine meters tall. It's about eight meters now, so it's still really big. Okay, it's not as big as some other ones I've talked about, like the ones in Gamla Uppsala or uh, Ennens Herg, but those are from a l much later. If you think about this, this is about 2,000 years older. So, I mean, a 1,000 years before Christ, this man was living, and he was an important man, right? You know that this is, uh, like, in the, old, in the Viking times, a few more people had burial mounds. In fact, families at Vendel, like, these were just like local farmers, but they got those burial mounds. But in the original Bronze Age, and in the things before, it was really important people. The Kurgans, uh, who are thought to be very close to the original Proto-Indo-European culture, they have burial mounds. And now, here, up here in Scandinavia, this is probably one of the earliest ones. So that culture down from the invading Indo-Europeans came into Scandinavia, and they brought with it this culture here of this burial practice. Now... How important was this man? Well, let me tell you this. This barrow contained more gold than any other burial in Scandinavia. More than any of the Viking Age or anything. You can see, I've got some shots here. There's a sword. There's, uh, there's lots of bronze items, actually, but they're gilt with gold. Buttons gilt with, thickly gilt with gold. Brooches. One of, these, one of the brooches was actually stolen in 1986 from the museum in Stockholm and uh, was later found, the bits of it were found outside the entrance when the snow melted. Then you've got all these uh, pincers and things. Uh, all this stuff was probably made down in Zealand, which is now part of Denmark. Uh, and so it shows there was an extensive trade route. And anyway, whoever this guy was, he was important to have all that stuff. Unfortunately, the exhibit in Stockholm has to focus on how this indicates inequality, that a man had one man had so much wealth and other people didn't have it. No, there was no communism in uh, Bronze Age Scandinavia. So uh, sorry about that Museum of Stockholm history. Uh, you'll have to get over it. But what we know also about this man, they loved him probably. They weren't like, they didn't have this mentality of envy in this ancient culture. They loved him and three people were buried with him, two women and one man. Was it 
his servants, his slaves, were they forced? Or maybe they were voluntary, maybe they wanted to be buried with this great man so that they could accompany him to the afterlife and their souls could be unified with this great man. Don't know. But there was also a whole load of animals, ox, pigs, sheep. Maybe these were sacrificed in his name or maybe there was just a huge feast and these were all the remains of the, of the meal and they were all chucked in there in the, with the ashes. Hard to say. But what we can say is this was a great man. Can you imagine? What would he look like? Would he look like modern day Swedes? Probably he, this golden Swede might look familiar to us if we were to see him today. If we think about why there's so much gold in the burial, we shouldn't just think about things like wealth. We shouldn't just think, if we want to get inside the Aryan or Indo-European mindset, don't think about gold just in terms of money. Gold had a symbolic, metaphysical value. And associating this man with gold was to show how his high status in society. And this isn't just something you find in the European societies. The Aztecs had similar ideas in, in, in other American societies. The, the Incas too. Gold is the colour of the sun. It's the closest thing to the sun. And the sun is uh, the bringer of light. And light is a metaphysical sign of truth. So gold is an, like an Aryan symbol for truth and light. So when we see all these great gold items in this man, this golden one, we can associate him with godliness, saintliness, uh, some high position in a, a hierarchical Indo-European society. He may have been a warrior priest. He may have been, uh, you know, uh, had some kind of divine associations in his bloodline or in his role in society, which connected the people with divinity itself. Uh, and ha perhaps by being buried with these gold items, it was a way of ensuring that in the afterlife he would go into the, the golden place, which is the place of truth, to become one with uh, metaphysical truth, what we call God in, uh, the Abra in Christianity, for example. It's certainly not appropriate to think of him in terms of a, a, a wealthy uh, man, who, a merchant of some kind who had hoarded all his wealth away from the people who deserved it most. This mentality is as far away as you could get from the Indo-European mentality.